In this video, I want to show that Q is dense inside of R. And that basically means that between any two real numbers, there is a rational number. Our textbook states that as problem 27. So to get started, I want to let R1 be less than R2 inside the set of real numbers. And our goal is to find a Q inside the set of rational numbers such that R1 is less than Q and Q is less than R2. Now we don't have much of a hypothesis to start with. All we really have is this inequality, and I'm going to draw that on a number line. So there's my number line, and I do want to actually add in uh, where R1 is and where R2 is. And so that's what my number line looks like. Now I'm told that the Archimedean principle is going to be useful. And the Archimedean principle says that there exists an n inside the set of integers such that little n is less than or equal to r1, and r1 will be less than n plus 1. Well, I don't know much about this, but it does tell me that n is over here, and n plus 1 is somewhere over here, but I don't know n plus 1's relationship with R2, and we're going to get involved in that in just a minute. But there's another thing that I also want to remind myself, and that's that this space might drop to zero. In other words, N and R may be, and my, I need to clean that up, these two things may be equal to each other. Now, I'm going to think about what's going on in the context of n plus 1. Uh, the law of trichotomy says that n plus 1 is either here, or it's equal to r2, or it's down here. So I'm going to add the assumption that r2 is actually bigger than n plus 1. And the reason I want to do this is because in this case, we are done. And I want to illustrate why we're done. If R2 is bigger than n plus 1, then n plus 1 sits in here, and that number line tells me immediately that R1 is less than n plus 1, and n plus 1 is less than R2. So we can let Q be equal to n plus 1, because n plus 1 is an integer, and the integers are a subset of the rational numbers. So at this point, I now know that we need to assume that R2 is less than or equal to n plus 1. What happens then? And that will be looked at in the next panel. In other words, I want to now assume the following stuff n is less than or equal to r1, and r1 is less than r2, and r2 is less than or equal to n plus 1. Again, I want to draw a number line to illustrate what's going on here. And let's see, what we have here is... Uh, R1 and R2 are in that kind of a relationship, and N is there, and N plus 1 is here, and I do want to remind myself that these two things may be equal, and these two things may be equal. Now, I'm also going to think about two more uh, things. I'm going to indicate them with lines indicating the distance. Uh, so let's see. First of all, this distance here is the distance between n and n plus 1. So that distance is equal to 1 unit. And I've also got 
this distance here between these two numbers, and that distance is r2 minus r1. And because there may be no space here and here, what I notice from this picture is that the distance between r2 and r1, which is r2 minus r1, I know that it might be, it, it, it's got to be bigger than zero, but it might be as big as one. Because if r1 and n are equal to one, are equal to each other, and r2 and n plus one are equal to each other, then this distance here is going to be the full length of that brown interval. We're going to discuss those two different situations separately. So what happens if r1, rather r2 minus r1, is actually equal to 1. Well, let's actually fix the number line up and redraw it. So in this particular case, what we've got is r1 is equal to n, and r2 is equal to n plus 1. And in this particular case, note that the midpoint of this interval, which is n plus n plus 1 divided by 2, that is 2n plus 1 over 2, and that midpoint is going to be there, the midpoint is a rational number because this is an integer divided by another integer, and r1 is less than m is less than r2 because of the fact that n is equal to r1 and n plus 1 is equal to r2. So we're done. And that means we now have one more case to focus on. So what happens if the distance between r1 and r2 is strictly less than 1. Well, we'll deal with that in the next panel. So I want to, first of all, write down what we're assuming. We now assume that n1 is less than or equal to r1, and r1 is strictly less than r2, and r2 is strictly less than n plus 1. And I want to write my uh, number line down so that I can figure out what's going on on the number line. So here's R1, and here's R2. And N is here, and N plus 1 is up over here, and I want to remind myself that these two things may be equal. But what I do know is that R2 minus R1 is strictly less than 1, and it's got to be bigger than 0. Now, we have something, of an important idea about reciprocals that kicks in in this particular situation. I know that there exists an N inside the natural numbers such that 1 over n is smaller than r2 minus r1, and it's bigger than 0. And I want to make the reminder that capital N itself is bigger than 0 because it's a natural number. And uh, this is also less than 1. So we have the inequality 1 over n is bigger than 0, and it's less than r2 minus r1, and that is less than 1. And I know that n is bigger than 0, so I can multiply this inequality by n, and the order does not change. n times 1 over n is less than n times r2 minus r1, and that's less than n times 1. 
So what have I now got? We now have one is less than n times r2 minus n times r1, and that is less than n. Now, it turns out that this part of the inequality is not going to be all that interesting, but this part of the inequality is extremely interesting. And I want to look at that on the next panel. We know 1 is less than n times r2 minus n times r1. And I want to add n times r1 to both sides. So we have n times r1 plus 1 is less than n times r2. And this number here, n times r1 plus 1, is clearly bigger than n times r1. And I want to put that on a number line. So what I've got here now is this. Here is n times r1. Here is n times r1 plus 1. And here is n times r2. And what I want to look at next is the fact that there exists a k inside the integers such that k is less than or equal to n times r1, and n times r1 is going to be strictly less than k plus 1. So we are going to add that information to our number line. So k is here. Now I want to think about where does k plus 1 live on this number line? Well, I can pick up on this particular thing here. k is less than or equal to n times r plus 1 is enough to imply that k plus 1 is less than or equal to n times r1 plus 1. In other words, I know that this number here is at least as big <coughs> as k plus 1. Now, it's true these two things might be equal and these two things might be equal, but this guy over here is strictly bigger than that guy. And what I can now do is write the following inequality. This number line tells me the following information. This number here is strictly less than k plus 1, and k plus 1 is strictly less than n times r2. And remember, n is bigger than 0, so we can divide this inequality to get r1 is less than k plus 1 divided by capital N, which is less than r2. In other words, we can let q be the rational number k plus 1 over capital N, and that will indeed be inside the rational numbers, and in that case, q will be between r1 and r2.